Our next international award winner is uh, Lewis Kay. He is Professor in the Department of Molecular Genetics, Biochemistry and Chemistry at the University of Toronto, and also a senior scientist at the Hospital for Sick Children uh, in Toronto. And Lewis is awarded for the development of modern NMR spectroscopy for studies of biomolecular structure, dynamics, and function, including their applications to molecular machines and rare proteins. And now I'd like to invite Lewis to come to the stage. And his music is rather special. It's called Toronto. And it's music produced by his son, Rafi. As Janet mentioned, that song was uh, composed and performed many years ago by my 12-year-old son, Ruffy. And while I don't think he should give up his day job as a uh, University of Toronto student of architecture, I think it's actually pretty good. <laughs> so I want to begin today by acknowledging a group of people uh, who don't often, I think, get the recognition that they deserve, although Janet mentioned them. And it's through their vision that we are here tonight, a vision that many years ago recognized the importance of basic biomedical research, long before words like translation and impact became dominant players on the scientific landscape. Of course, I'm speaking about the Gairdner family and the patriarch of the family, Mr. James Gairdner. Mr. Gairdner did a great many things in his life, yet he was not a scientist. I am quite sure, however, that were he alive today, he would be as enthusiastic as I for our government to continue its leadership role by a committing a sum that is roughly a half or one or two percent of the projected multi-billion dollar defense budget so as to fund basic biomedical science. It seems like a small investment, but one that would be truly transformative and super high impact and even translational, if you like those sorts of words. <laughs> we live in an era that is replete with challenges, in part due to an increasingly aging po population. But for perhaps the first time, we are in a collective position to make outstanding advances that will change things. And there is an incredible group of young scientists who deserve the same support that I got when I was at their stage, who are equally as committed, far brighter, and armed with the passion and the determination to make the next generation of discoveries that our society so much depends on. I am asking the Government of Canada to do for them what it has done for me. It is this leadership by the government that brought me back to Canada some 26 years ago with funding from the Protein Engineering Network Center of Excellence. After a PhD and a postdoc in the US, my wife Julie, also a scientist, and I were trying to decide between John Hopkins University in Toronto. We made a list of pros and cons, a very detailed list, even taking into account the uh, bullet hole that was from a bullet that pierced the office of the chair of the Department of Biophysics at Hopkins. <laughs> and after thinking about it deeply, the decision turned out to be a tie. <laughs> Building on years of problem-solving skills and intuition, I suggested that flipping a coin would be an ideal way of solving the problem. Because you see, we could use heads for Hopkins and tails for Toronto. And I note, although I am dig digressing, that the similar situation would have worked if the choice had been Toronto or Harvard. And so I told Julie to flip the coin so that I could always blame her if I didn't have a good career. <laughs> and the coin was flipped, 
and it came up, it landed, and it came up with H on heads. Remember, that's Hopkins. <laughs> so I looked at Julie, and I told her to flip the coin again. <laughs> you see, I am Canadian. I was born in Canada, I was raised in Canada, I was educated in Canada, I recorded my first NMR spectrum in Canada, and while I tru truly enjoyed my time in the US of A, I wanted to come back home. And I have been very lucky with that decision. Both Julie and I have been strongly supported by the University of Toronto and the Hospital for Sick Children. I have been allowed to, to pursue esoteric things like understanding angular momenta of spin in a methyl group that then led to ways of exploring the molecular machines of the cell. I would like to express my deep thanks to the Gardner Selection Committee and to Janet and John for branching out into the world of biophysics, a relatively new discipline that combines physics and biochemistry. I would also like to thank my trainees who have taught me far more than I have them. Even though my wife, Julie, is not the best coin flipper in the world, <laughs> she eventually got it straight. Having the wonderful support from Julie and from my children, Ruffy and Shira, at the end of a long day when my spins don't spin the right way has been a major joy in my life. Special thanks are also due to my parents and my sister, Lisa. When I was a graduate student at Yale, I used to come to Toronto to visit my parents every Gardner weekend and also to visit my sister who was living in Toronto. My dad was affiliated with Gardner in those days, and so my parents would fly from Edmonton to Toronto for the Gardner festivities. I would then join them. How special it is now that the situation is reversed with my parents flying in to join me. My parents have been flying into Toronto for Gardner celebrations for over 30 consecutive years. I guess with those numbers, the odds are pretty good that eventually you'll see your son win one. <laughs> Thanks for your patience, Mom and Dad, and for your incredible support. I never would have thought that one day I would own one of these super tight, itchy, uncomfortable, form-fitting costumes, <laughs> let alone have to wear it for such a wonderful occasion. I am so very grateful for Ger to Gardner for introducing me to the nuances of tuxedos and formal attire, and for all the work that went into providing such a wonderful and exciting week. Thank you so very, very much.